All right, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you back to America Talks Live, 877 Newsmax. If you want to weigh in on this day before Election Day 2016, joining us on the panel, Stacey Washington, host of Stacey on the Right Show. And uh, make sure you check out StaceyOnTheRight.com. Brent Podowski, contributor for The Hill and former aide to Senator Lloyd Benson. We're having a little technical issue with him. We hope to get him uh, on the panel very, very soon. Hello, Stacey. Hey there. All right, so, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. I just had on the, uh, the mother of, uh, of a former Navy uh, sailor uh, who was uh, sent to, to prison for a year for taking pictures in his uh, submarine before he left uh, the submarine for good. And even though there was no intent and the judge said he had no intent, it was just the, the act of having them uh, on an insecure device that uh, sent him to jail and his, mo his mother, Kathleen, who was with us, said, you know, she, she just can't take it because he's in jail for a year with a, with a little baby at home, and he had no intent, and they keep saying Hillary's not in jail because she had no intent. Uh, it's, it's a huge double standard, and I just, I, I, my heart goes out to them because there's a, there are additional ramifications that come along with that. I'm an Air Force veteran, and I received that same security briefing that, uh, that others have received. And basically, in addition to him going to prison, he has a dishonorable discharge, which yeah. means when employers look up his record and ask for his DD, his form DD-214, that's your discharge form. It tells people how you left the service. And if it's dishonorable, it's the same as having a criminal conviction, and it almost makes you unemployable. So he'll have to be self-employed. He'll have to start his own business. And even then, it's getting loans. When the, people find out you've been on active duty, they want to see your dd 214. It's almost like a statement of your credit. And so there are additional things that this poor young man is going to have to go through. And I believe in equal justice under the law. So if you've broken the law, by all means, the punishment should fit the crime. But it's ridiculous that someone who simply lacks the last name of Clinton should be sent to prison. I mean, he hasn't even harmed anyone physically. And Hillary Clinton, on the other hand, is running for the presidency of the United States and will occupy a 55,000 square foot, five level mansion with armed security for four years for 475 grand a year. That's Amazing. Yep, Brent. Uh, I know you joined this late. I'm glad you're aboard. We were just talking. I just had uh, uh, the mother uh, of uh, of uh, a former Navy machinist, uh, Christian Saucier, who is uh, in jail. Went to jail in October for a year because uh, a few years ago he took pictures of uh, uh, the the uh, nuclear sub he was on, and he was leaving it, so he wanted some souvenir pictures, and many of them did that. He left. Judge said at the trial he had no criminal, he had no intent to harm the country. He loves the country, blah, blah, blah. But just because he mishandled this classified information, even though it was the lowest, lowest, lowest level, uh, he's in jail. And yesterday we find out that once again, uh, Hillary, because there was no intent, she skates. So you wrote a piece earlier uh, at the end of October about Comey's double standard of justice against Clinton. Yeah, there's a double standard. As uh, Stacey said, if your name is Clinton, nothing happens to you. Well, number one, the case is closed. So be it. No, it's not closed. Stop. It's not closed, not Brent. Sure. It's not closed. Hey, well, <laughs> look, it, you know, Steve, if you want to go down to the wire talking about Clinton emails, be my guest, okay? Uh, Comey announced what he announced yesterday. It's time to move on. Now, as far as your, your earlier guest, was her name Kathleen? Yes. Uh, was that her name, the, the mother? Yes. Well, tell her she should feel free to contact me privately. Um, I don't want to, I don't know the facts of her son's case, uh, but I'll be glad to offer some advice and if possible some help. I am sympathetic to what happened to her son. Okay, fair enough. Um, I appreciate that. And if that. I can be helpful, I, I personally, I personally will do my best that she uh, contacts me privately. Okay, fair um, enough. That's, that's very you know, nice of you. Yeah. Very nice of you. All right, so let, let's let's move on. Uh, you know, the, the, the polls that are out today, uh, uh, Stacey, uh, the national polls, most of them show Hillary up uh, for, by a slight margin. Um, even the Fox News poll, I think, has her up by four. Of course, Investors Business Daily has Trump up by two, and, uh, and L.A. Times up by five. But, um, you know, it's interesting because uh, you have uh, the, Nate Silver, the polling guru, uh, who says that Hillary is one state away from losing the election. So I find that to be very interesting. He says anybody who says Hillary has this wrapped up is making a very, very big mistake. 
Yeah, he specifically said that if you think she has a 99% chance of winning, that he questions your polling methodology. I, I, I'm not a crystal ball person. I don't have one in my, you know, in, here in the office with me. But I do know that there's a huge segment of the voting populace that has been activated for this election that are not the recipient of these phone calls. They're polling likely voters and people who have voted frequently in the past. Uh, there are millions of Americans who up until this point didn't feel the need to vote because they hadn't really looked at what was going on in this country with clear eyes. Donald Trump has activated a lot of those voters. Now, I don't know that he's going to win. The odds are that he won't. But I think people who are simply saying Madam President over and over and over again, like a mantra, are missing the bigger picture here. Americans are highly dissatisfied with the current leadership in Washington. And if you want more of the same, you'll vote for Hillary. But if you want change and you're interested in keeping more of your own money, then you're going to vote for Donald Trump. What about it, Brent? What, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? Uh, let me put it this way. I have no idea. I think Hillary has a slight edge. Uh, you're not hearing me talk about Madam President. Uh, but I'll tell you a quick story Ted Kennedy once told me uh, when he was running for the Democratic leadership in the Senate against Robert Byrd. And, and, and he, everyone thought he was going to win. And he lost. And I once asked him, what happened? And he goes, well, now, when I walked into the meeting before the vote, I had 31 votes. When I walked out of the meeting after the vote, I had 31 votes. When they voted, I only got 29 votes. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning the two people didn't tell them the truth. Right. Um, now, you know, I, I think your, your other guest is right. There are people on both sides who are not counted because they're new voters. Uh, I think there are a number of people who don't want to admit that they're voting for Hillary or Donald. I think that is an error in polling on both sides. I cannot give you a percentage. Um, but no, I, I think Hillary has a slight edge. I think Donald can certainly win. Absolutely. A, 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 any any a Green Bay Packers factor? Like, uh, what, what's the history on the Sunday before the election? If the Packers lose, what happens? Democrat or Republican, Brent? Actually, Steve, I got a great analogy for you. The only way the Packers have a chance of getting into the into the playoffs, they can win the NFC Central because the teams are so bad this year in that division that a 500 team might actually win, which is not unlike two unpopular candidates for president. Yeah, and, and one winning with 45 percent of the popular vote or less. You're right. All right, let me let me play yeah. you guys something. Uh, this is Barack Obama. Uh, speaking uh, to, I don't even know that, what network this is, it, I never heard of it, but listen to this. Many of the millennials, dreamers, undocumented uh, citizens, and I call them citizens because they contribute to this country, are fearful of voting. So if I vote, will immigration know where I live? Will they come for my family and deport us? Not true. And the reason is, first of all, when you vote, you are a citizen yourself, and there is not a situation where the voting rolls somehow are transferred over and people start investigating, et cetera. The sanctity of the vote is strictly confidential. All right, Stacy. I mean, she said illegals, if they vote, like me, if I vote, uh, is immigration going to come and get me? And he said, no, go ahead, vote. You're illegal. Go vote. So I, I watched the whole segment because I had to watch it three times to try to get what was said there. He did eventually say citizens. Now, the issue is that she said she considered the definition of a citizen to be anyone who contributed to the right. country. So the, he didn't clear it up. And this has been a consistent problem with President Obama. In his quest to legitimize everyone and, and, and stroke everyone's feelings, he oftentimes misses what should be rudimentary for him as an attorney, which is that details matter. If you are an illegal person here, an illegal alien, whatever you're calling yourself nowadays under the AP style book, you do not have the right to vote in our elections. I grew up in Germany. I never once voted there after I turned 18 and kept returning back during college. And even when I was on active duty in the military, I visited my family there. And I never voted because I wasn't a citizen of the Deutsche Bund Republic or right, whatever right, it's called. Right, right. So it's, it's not fair for President Obama to make these characterizations on television because it validates millions of people who are here illegally breaking the law and invalidates people like myself who serve for this country for one citizen, one vote. Let me get to Brent. Brent, final word, sir. Go ahead. Well, I think what we need is a system where everybody who should lawfully vote should lawfully vote and not be obstructed by any side for any reason. I'm a big believer in the right to vote. 
There is obstruction going on against black voters by some Republicans. That's there are also problems in voting. Uh, and and huh. it, go, it cuts both ways. Uh, but what do you, you, know? you think, Brenda, only because we've got vote. 30 seconds left, what do you think of what Obama said there? Oh, I, you know, I wasn't aware of what he actually said, so I'm not going to be able to speak intelligently on it. I can only tell you my position. Okay. Uh, I think someone who is an immigrant qualified to vote under the law, if they get naturalized, should be able to vote. Uh, I think uh, everybody qualified, we should defend all of their rights to vote, right. no matter who they are, Good. who they support. Good enough. Brent Podowski, Stacey Washington, thank you both. And I will have Kathleen get in touch with you if she so desires. Very generous offer, Brent. Thank you very much. Up next... Alan Dershowitz with more on the FBI and Hillary's emails and uh, does he agree with the decision by Comey or not? Keep it right here.